All right, here we are, last week of June, um, out in the garden in Phoenix, and you can see um, this is where everything is right now. That's actually the first squash blossom I've seen on the butternut squash vines. So that's pretty cool. I got another one over there. That's pretty awesome. So this concerns me, the drooping. So that is either it's hot, which it is. It's 107 degrees right now um, as I'm standing here. So I'm not going to film for very long, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, so it's either because it's hot or it's because I've got squash bugs. That is always my major concern when I grow any kind of squash is squash bugs. They get pretty, pretty bad. Um, so I'm going to water. I'm going to see if they perk up by tonight because the plan for tonight is to come back out here in the cool ish as cool as it gets it'll still be over 100 um but i'll come out in the evening and i will chop these down to probably only two vines each i'll do that for the butternut squash these two butternut squash plants and i'm going to do it for my cantaloupe as well um just to try to i don't know i like i want more vining but i also would like to actually get some some good yield and everything I've read says in order to kind of get good yield, you need to have only a couple of vines or only one vine. I'm not going to cut it down to only one vine. I only have two plants. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do that tonight. And then also I'm going to be transferring out these loofah. I said I was going to pull that cantaloupe if it didn't start getting bigger, and it really hasn't. So I'm going to pull that and transfer one of these loofah, which are coming out nice, looking nice with their little leaves. And... Um, those will move, one of those will move over there at least. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm planning on doing tonight, but this is kind of what we've got going on. And I'll show you, like I've said in previous videos, um, the, like I said, the butternut squash is drooping again. Hopefully it's just because it's hot and it needs water. Um, but look at my cantaloupe. So that's butternut squash, cantaloupe. Look, it's just like totally fine. <laughs> so cantaloupe is just amazing especially out here it just seems to really love the heat nothing ever seems to phase it so that is definitely one that I like to have in my summer garden um, pretty often so like I said I don't want to record too much I will uh, put the phone away actually the phone will overheat if I'm out here too long filming um, and so I will go ahead actually and get all the lids off so that you guys can see where the water level is uh, we just filled it yesterday. So far, we're filling only once a day. And hopefully, these um, pots help it keep keep it so that all we have to do is water once a day, uh, which would be a major improvement over the typical, which is when it starts hitting these kinds of temperatures, especially once it starts getting into the one teens, um, we, will, we were usually watering like three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, just to keep stuff alive. Um, which comes with its own problems. And like I said, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I guess I should so that I don't forget. Um, primarily that when you water too much, you're watering enough to keep the plants alive, but then you start watering so much that you're flushing nutrients out of the soil. And so that becomes its own problem. And so if I can manage to only water once a day, I won't have to work as hard at um, feeding the plants. And typically what that is for me is just like leftover tea leaves, um, compost that we make and like uh, worm castings is the way that I feed my plants and so yeah hopefully I won't have to really do a lot of that this year um, and hopefully these pots will work so like I said let's go ahead and see what is the level in the pots like once it starts getting to be you know truly into some pretty hot temperatures like I said it's 107 right now it's four o'clock in the afternoon um, and so yeah let's see what we got Okay, here's where we are. This is what the water level looks like after a full day in all the pots. Most of them are about half full. This one really doesn't empty hardly at all, which might be partly why that cantaloupe is not doing well. The other pot over there is also not very empty, but everything around it is thriving. So I'm wondering if because, oh, and this one is still roughly half full. Because this one's so enclosed and protected and shaded, 
I'm wondering if that is also keeping it because I seem to remember this one was um, draining before much better than it is now. And I think that it might just be that um, it's got plenty of shade. So it might be keeping it more moist right here where it's not needing to take as much water in order to keep that spot. Good for plants, but like I said, oh, it is time to start watering. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go foraging really fast. The grapes are looking absolutely beautiful. I've been purposefully trying to leave them, but I don't wanna leave them too long because then the birds are gonna start getting them. But let me, ah, oh, that came off pretty easy. Nice juicy grape. Let me see, we play another sour <laughs> or ripe. <laughs> oh, there it is. They're getting sweet. So I need to start um, picking those. What I really need to do, like I said, I really need to start watering. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Okay, everything is full. Everything is watered. I'll wait until the evening to make any big changes. I'm gonna transfer some of the plants as well. Um, but yeah, the squash is already looking a bit perked up, so I'm going to take that as a very good sign. But I do definitely need to get out here again, um, with some neem and spray just as a preventive. But yeah, I gotta get back in. Um, it's not just hot, it's, um, I got bitten by another one of those ants I haven't seen before in my yard. Um, I'm used to these little black ants. We usually have just kind of little black ants out here. Nothing ever seems to get rid of them. This is a really big black ant um, and it, it burns quite a lot. So when I was growing up in Texas, we had fire ants and that's not what these are, but they're just a different kind of ant and it hurts pretty bad. I'm gonna go inside and put a little bit of basil on the bite. So chewed up basil, fresh basil as a poultice, but in lieu of that, I have some basil essential oil. I'll put a little on there, but chewed up basil, um, Fresh basil is the best poultice for ant bites. Um, I don't have any basil out here this year, so usually I take care of it in that way. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have had some basil. Uh, but yeah, I will go inside and deal with that and then come out in the evening. So that was something. It's the other reason I'm not having you see me is because I kind of can't, I can't see my viewfinder. So, um, I see my reflection more than I see the viewfinder. My reflection is not what is in the screen. Um, but it was a, a local guy. I, I learned a lot from him. And he was the one who was saying, he gardened here and with huge success, that anytime you do any kind of changes to the plants, to do it in the evening, transferring, even planting out new plants if you buy them in the store, do it in the evening so that um, they have all night to acclimate and then uh, they have a much better chance of surviving because they'll have all night and kind of in the morning and then when the afternoon sun hits, they've already been in the ground for a while um, and they just seem to do better. So I've always followed that advice and it always seems to ring true. Oh my gosh, I feel my phone. My phone is very hot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I have one more tip I wanted to share but I will hopefully remember to share it in a little bit. Okay, I'm in some shade. I can actually see I will share my tip because I know I'll forget, um, but now I'm watching because this area of the yard is overrun with spiders. <laughs> so I have to really keep an eye out over here. Um, and so that's actually another thing pretty soon we'll take care of. Um, that same sprayer that we use for the neem, we mix up a solution that's pretty heavy on peppermint essential oil and you just spray. And we did that several years ago and we haven't had spiders really returning for years, literal years. This is the first year that they've become, begun returning to this area. And so we need to go ahead and kind of clean up and do that again. Um, but that's kind of another tip if you need to keep spiders away. Um, I don't so much not mind like the daddy long legs, but we do definitely get a lot of black widows out here. And um, that is not a fun thing to have to worry about. Now I'm like looking again, <laughs> anything down here. Um, so the other tip that I wanted to share is something that I kind of picked up from Tony Riddle. It was not um, specifically gardening advice, but I think it's good advice in general for, I've adopted it for my gardening 
practice out here in the extreme heat that he does a kind all kinds of super long distance runs with very little food very little water um, and one of his primary things that he teaches and practices is nasal breathing um, and so like I'm not being I'm not doing that right now because I'm talking to you guys so much but typically when I come out here I try as hard as I can not to even open my mouth unless I'm, you know, grabbing and eating a grape or something. I'm just breathing through my nose the entire time that I'm out here because he was saying that you lose the most, like, moisture and water. You lose most of it just through your mouth. Um, now, obviously, I don't know if that necessarily means also with sweat or obviously you sweat and lose electrolytes and water as well, but he can run much farther distances than most without assistance and he doesn't get dehydrated. And he says that it's because he breathes through his nose because you're not going <sighs> and like losing water evaporating out of your mouth and then immediately filling with more saliva and then evaporating. Then, you know, so that, that is water that's being lost from your body. So, that's another tip and it's something that I keep in mind for myself if I were ever to find myself out kind of stuck in the desert um, and I don't know if my car breaks down or something like that um, to immediately switch to only nasal breathing unless I'm drinking something um, and avoid the tent avoid the temptation to go you know like a little dog or whatever but to try to keep as much as that of that water inside your body as you possibly can you can't really control your sweat but you can control what you're losing through your mouth. So I thought that was super interesting. And so that's something that I do. And something that I keep in mind living in the desert. And I thought I would share that, but seriously, I'm going inside now. I'm gonna get my watermelon. And yes, I'm out of breath. People say, you're out of breath. And like criticize me for it. It's 107 degrees out here and I'm working and watering and trying to talk to you all. So yes, I am out of breath. Okay, I'll bring you back out in the evening and show you what I end up doing tonight. Hey, we no longer have direct sun on the beds and so I'm out here to go ahead and do my transplanting. Um, and so from what I've read, actually, if you're going to trim back your butternut squash vines, it's best to wait until they're anywhere from 10 to 15 feet long. Um, and so I was reading up on the cantaloupe as well that apparently um, the plants need all of the leaves that they can get in order to sweeten the fruit and ripen the fruit. So cutting back is not necessarily necessary and so I think I'm going to still kind of fan these guys out sort of spread them a little bit um, but yeah I'm not going to be cutting those back today after what I read and I'll, I'll do a little bit more research on that and, and see what we got but I am going to be transplanting <clears throat> like I said a couple of these loofahs and I'm going to be transplanting some of these pepper seedlings they haven't moved since they sprouted um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get those done and hopefully we end up with some nice big plants <laughs> Here are the jalapeno seedlings, and I am going to basically, I'm going to move both of these. This is not a good spot for them. They're getting way too much shade from, primarily from the catnip plant. Um, and so basically what I do is I have a fork. This is my, my gardening fork. It's literally just an old fork. Um, I go into the soil, kind of underneath the roots, and just sort of pop up like that. And then I pull this out, and then you have... The plant and the roots and it's just fine now i'll just put these apart and put them where i want them to go now all right so then in order to plant these i just sort of move the wood chips aside and i'm gonna come in again just with my little fork and kind of loosen up just that area and then make a spot for the plant to go then I just sort of cinch it in there. That might have been actually a little too low. I'm gonna pop that back up a little bit. And just sort of cinch it in there. And then put the wood chips back. And so it'll be happy. And then the next step here, just a second, is just to put some water. So we just have a little bit of water in a water bottle so I'm gonna go ahead and drench it give it some nice drink to both the ones I just transplanted and then let them settle overnight and hopefully tomorrow morning they will find that they really love their new home all right so right here Adam is out here um, doing his spray uh, the neem and uh, peppermint dr. Bronner mix 
to sort of help with aphids, the soap, um, but then the neem is also to really repel squash bugs. We're really staying on top of it this year. Last year, squash bugs wiped out so much of our garden. They were horrible. Um, they were even wiping out my eggplants. I was like, come on, stay in your lane. You're squash bugs, not eggplant bugs. But anyway, I digress. So <laughs> we have um, these two uh, cantaloupe plants. So this one is a little smaller. I did go ahead and rip that one out and put a loofah there. If the loofah fails to thrive like the cantaloupe, I'm going to be looking at this pot to see if, I don't know if I need to replace it or I might need to pull it out and sand it, which is one of the things the book talks about the gardening with less water, dealing with your pots. Um, and so we might need to figure out how to get that thing to seep a little bit more water to keep the plants good. I decided to just pinch off the bell pepper plant. So there's only one in each spot now, um, and I'm not going to move those. But then the jalapenos, you saw those are now in between these two um, pots on each side there. We're gonna see if they start doing better. I, I think I've shared before, I've never been successful with growing peppers, bell peppers, jalapenos, any of that from seed. Um, so I'm really eager to see if we can do it this time. <clears throat> um, hopefully, so these are my seeds from Survival Garden Seed. And so far they're doing really well and hopefully they keep doing well. Um, and so this plant here is gonna trail this way um, and hopefully the loofah will as well. And then this cantaloupe plant here, this is one plant. I'm going to be trailing that along this whole side. And then that way, hopefully, eventually, once we start hitting serious heat, um, because 107 is not serious heat um, for my area, um, this entire bed will be shaded with plants that are totally fine in the heat, and it will help with water retention and just keep the soil um, more protected um, and help, yeah, like I said, with water retention. It won't evaporate as much of the sun is not directly hitting the side. And so that was kind of the plan all along. And so you are seeing now in action what I've been talking about with these vining plants coming along to shade and shield the sides of my beds. I'm very excited though too. <laughs> as I was kind of feathering out and moving these vines, I'm finding several baby fruits already, um, just, just everywhere. So I am so excited about that. Um, and so the cantaloupe that's right here, it's going to be trailing more this way along with the other cantaloupe and I'm going to give room like this whole corner over here this corner area I'm going to give to this butternut squash plant and let that trail out over here and possibly kind of into the rocks behind me so we have a lot of empty space around this bed but I'm trying to keep this area clear as a walkway um, and so then this plant here will trail more down this way as it gets bigger. I'm also ridiculously thrilled to report we've also got some many um, baby butternut squashes that I did not see before. So I'm truly hoping and praying that we manage to get control of those squash bugs this year. And hopefully that neem oil really does the trick. Um, and that's just kind of <laughs> my prayer and my hope from what I was reading. Um, you can get anywhere from 10 to 20 butternut squash from a single vine if you treat it well. So I'm doing everything I can to treat it well. Hopefully we'll get anywhere from 20 to 40 butternut squash just off of these only these two plants, which would be amazing. <laughs> and so that's another reason that I was planting the butternut squash, like instead of pumpkins, I just feel like it's gonna end up being more useful for us. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Here we are late June, last week of June. I need to cut back this tomato plant some more. It's just like will not stop growing <laughs> just just craziness but yeah i've yet to see a single tomato off of it so i mean like not even forming so i'm really curious what is going on with this plant because clearly i have pollinators and clearly you know my cantaloupe and my butternut squash are producing i got elderberries off of my elderberry bush I got uh, many, many, many Moringa pods off of my Moringa tree. So, and I'm getting tons of cayenne peppers off my cayenne pepper bush in a different part of the yard. So like, I know I've got bees in here pollinating, but for whatever reason, this tomato plant is just not, like there's not been a single tomato. So I'm just kind of watching it and waiting. I know it's gonna ripen now. It's too hot for it to ripen now, but yeah, I'm just sort of like, are you, are you broken? You just like taking time. It's like, I'm gonna give you some time, sweetie, but you, you know, you're kind of lucky that you're already so huge and providing so much shade. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, hopefully you will actually make some tomatoes for me pretty soon. Sorry, you guys. I'm like talking to my plant. I talk to my plants. I don't know if that's crazy, but I do talk to them. And I tell them like kind of... <laughs> it is crazy, I guess, a little bit. But 
I believe that there's a little bit of power in speaking and I, I tell them this is what I'm expecting from you. I expect that you, you will produce, you know, I'm, I didn't plant you for no reason. <laughs> like I planted you for a purpose and this is your purpose and I'm giving it its purpose. And so, I don't know, that might sound crazy, but I do talk to my plants. It's like, hey, did you forget? You're supposed to make tomatoes, you're a tomato plant. Many, many flowers, but no tomatoes. So anyway, all right, I think I am officially going to leave you, but that's the update. That's where we are now. Um, hoping and praying, fingers crossed that we do not deal with squash bugs this year, or at least they get taken care of with the neem spray. Um, yeah, it is a really serious concern of mine, uh, but otherwise everything is looking great. I'm so thankful, so grateful. You know, we have had such a ridiculous um, reduction in the size of the garden, but I'm just like, praying and I'm believing that this year we'll see even greater yields than we have in the past and it'll still all work out. So anyway, yeah, so I guess I'm gonna go and like, I look amazing, don't I? Don't I look glorious? I was putting off my shower until I was done outside. So I will look presentable in about 20 minutes. <laughs> but okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go now. Hopefully any of that was helpful and you know, you got some good tips that will help you if you're trying to garden in a harsh climate and it's just kind of what we're doing. And I hope you're enjoying seeing the progress. I certainly am. I am thrilled to pieces about those little baby butternut squash. I'm so excited. So anyway, I've never managed to grow butternut squash to the point that I actually got squash off of it because of the stupid squash bugs. They destroy everything every time. I have managed to get pumpkins, but I've never managed to get butternut squash. So we'll see. I hope you're rooting for me. <laughs> and then I guess that's all as always. I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.